right in the afternoon, something we were looking at was, okay, let's go back all the way to the beginning of this topic, right? As two unit students, we know that we can express the volume of a solid of revolution in what way? As a two unit student, where are you at? I'll give you a clue. It starts like this. From A to B of what? Okay, as an example, this is where we begin, right? And this is a simple extension of an area underneath the curve. So when you're thinking underneath, you're comparing to the x-axis, aren't you? So that's why we, we begin here. But then we extend that. We say, hey, if you can do it around this axis, there's no reason why you can't do it around this axis. So you get x squared dy. No dramas. Okay, so this is where it begins. But we open the hood, right? And we said, yeah, what's really going on under here? And we said, actually... What this dx disguises is that there's this delta x which is getting very, very little, right? So we said this is really the limit as x approaches 0 of, and it's a sum on the same boundaries of what? What are we adding up? What, what we're dealing with here, uh, okay. what you're dealing with here is a series of cylinders, all of these particular cylinders, because you're going around the x-axis, they're all this way, so their width is delta x. It's, it's a width like this. Um, and this is the volume of the cylinder. We said, hey, look, you know what? Once you understand that, you can tease this apart. You can change the shape, the, the, the slices that you're adding up. You can have annular slices. You can change this. There's no reason why you have to be limited here or here, right? You can go off in any direction you like. You can go off at an angle, etc. We saw... At the moment, this is just limited to slicing perpendicular to the axis of rotation. But if we want to, we can go uh, parallel, sorry, parallel to the axis of rotation, and that gives you cylindrical shells. Okay? But as we established, every single volume that we've been looking at always has this. And that's because these are all volumes formed by, well, circular kind of things. Cylindrical shells, um, annular slices, <coughs> they are all about rotation, right? Um, all of these kinds of shapes, despite all of the things that we've changed, they're all formed by rotation in some way, okay? So where extension to volumes ends is to say, well, what if it's not by rotation, right? Now, here's a, an important shape I need you to draw, and it's the one we kind of started building yesterday. We're actually going to go into a, um, we're going to make a more 3D diagram than what we've done in the past. So what we've done usually is we just have our normal coordinate axes, and then we kind of look onto that, and we superimpose something onto that so we can kind of imagine, okay? But for these kinds of volumes, it's not going to cut it, okay? So what I want you to draw is an XY plane, but viewed from an angle. So imagine your XY plane kind of um, on the ground. All right, there we go. So here's an x-plane, okay, an x-axis rather, and I don't have another meter rule. So here's the y-axis, and we're looking at it. We're looking at it from above. It's sitting flat on the ground, okay? So let's actually label the axes as such. So I looked up the shape, it's cool. Cool, thank you. Uh, here we go. We'll keep, we'll maintain the x-axis being horizontal, okay? But here's our y-axis, which we usually think of as just going up. Okay, it's going off into the distance. Okay, that means there actually is a vertical axis here. I'm not going to draw it in though. We don't need it. We just have to get an idea of what's going on. Okay, so this shape that we were looking at yesterday, uh, where it begins is to say, all right, start with, <coughs> excuse me, a circular base. Now, if I were looking at this bang on, it would just be a circle equal radius. But because I'm off at an angle, what you're going to get will be kind of elliptical. Okay, so you're going to get something sort of roughly like that. Okay, so this is actually a circle, but we're looking at it from an angle. Okay. Now, do you remember what we did to create all of these guys, right? Is that these cylinders came from strips that were then rotated, right? Strips that were rotated. So here I want to do the same thing in terms of considering a strip, right? Something like, say, here. <clears throat> There's no um, axis of rotation for me to be perpendicular or parallel to because instead of creating a, a volume by rotating, I'm going to take this strip and make it the base, in this particular case, of a square prism. It's a square prism. So what I want is this is going to come up into the air. 
Okay, so to try and make it as realistic as possible, you might like to use a ruler to try and get these distances right. Okay. So this is roughly what I'm going to be. Okay. So, in the past we had cylindrical shells, we had annular slices. This is a square slice, okay? I've, I've cut across here, and I'm taking the width of this cord, right, and making that the side length of my square, okay? As you can see, and it's a bit hard, because the more of these you draw, the more cloudy your diagram becomes, because we're just kind of putting things on top of one another. You're going to get a shape. I mean, for example, you could draw this slice, probably. This one over here. This is going to be a much smaller square, yes? So it'll be something like this. Yeah. And you've got a whole bunch of these added up together. Now, Ms. Dorothy and I tried yesterday to approximate as best as we possibly could. It's quite difficult, obviously. So I enlisted a little bit of help. And unfortunately, this is not finished, but it'll still give you an idea. Don't worry, I'm going to put this back up in a second. This is the kind of shape we're looking at. Okay. Now, I want you to see... <clears throat> and unfortunately, to make it a little clearer to see, this diagram is not complete, but you've got enough of the shape for me to talk about, right? If you're to look from, in fact, I'm going to get the light. If you were to position yourself <clears throat> vertically right at the top, right? Like hovering like in a helicopter right above the middle of this shape, okay? If you were to then look down at the shape, can you see this, <clears throat> excuse me, this red outline here? You see that red outline? That's forming the circle. That's the base, okay? So on profile, that's what you're seeing, okay? But when you step back, even though it's just circular like that, you're not just getting a nice neat dome that's a hemisphere, okay? Because we've used squares all the way through, you get all these square, these flat edges here. And this is this, uh, I think, Raph, the word you used was a ridge. Right? I think ridge is exactly right. You've got this part that's coming up from all of the corners of your squares, right? As this would come down, where would this end? As, as these ridges come all the way down. They're going to end on the x-axis, aren't they? Do you see? They're all going to come down, and eventually there will be a square right here that has, well, has no width, right? Because it's right at the corner of the round part. Does that make sense? So this is the kind of shape that we've got. This is the visualization. 